Welcome back on my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to try how to derive the unit hydrograph for a catchment. We will use this DEM and LDD map. In a previous video I've demonstrated how to derive a catchment and calculate the local drain direction map using the PC Raster Tools plugin. I couldn't find much information on how to derive a unit hydrograph using GIS and in specific QGIS. But uh, I found a tutorial that I tried to replicate in uh, QGIS. The link to the original tutorial can be found in the description of this video. The first step is to calculate the flow accumulation. We will use the PC Raster Accuflux tool for that. But you see that it needs a material layer. We can create it using the spatial tool. If we make a raster with all pixels 1 in scalar data type, the mask layer LDD, it will accumulate uh, pixels. So unit 1 means that it just accumulates a unit of a pixel. Here we see the scalar 1 uh, raster, which is bigger than the catchment because there are a lot of missing values around uh, the mask that we use. I fill in the dialog to calculate the flow accumulation. We execute the Aquaflux tool and here is the flow accumulation. We also need the slope, so I calculate the slope from the DEM using the slope tool from PC Raster. And that will result in a fraction, so I give it the name slope fraction. Now I need to calculate the term of an equation using the raster calculator. And there I use the square root button at the slope fraction, but it's in fraction and it needs to be in percentage, so I multiply by 100, close the bracket, and we need to uh, multiply this with the square root of the flow accumulation. I save this as slope area term dot tiff. And we can check the result. For the next part of the equation I need the mean value, so I go to the layer properties and I copy simply the mean from here. Then in the raster calculator I can formulate the second part of the equation, which is 0 0.1 times bracket and then the slope area term, but then divided by its average value. And this is then the velocity. But we need to put some uh, limits on it for the range, so I call it velocity unlimited. Let's check in the layer properties what the ranges are. So it goes from 0 to 14.8, uh, and we need to limit it uh, to uh, 0 0.02 and uh, 2, according to the tutorial. So I use a if statement there. I use velocity unlimited, and if it's less or equal than 0 0.02, then give it value 0 0.02, else another if statement. If it's larger than 2, then make it 2. But I need also an else statement, because we also want all the values in between to be the original values. So this should be the equation. Always check if you have enough brackets. So, And I save it as velocity.tiff. In order to calculate the travel time, I need to create a raster layer with uh, weights. And that weight is 1 divided by the velocity. Call this weight.tiff. And let's convert this to the PC raster format, so we can use it in the LTD dist operation later. It's a scalar.
and I call it friction because that's the term that goes into the LDD dist operation. Now let's have a look at LDD dist that we need. Calculates the friction distance and we have all the parameters except the cells to which distance is calculated, which is the outlet. You can use an outlet if you already had that uh, for uh, delineating the catchment. Here I will show how to get the outlet. So I use the flow accumulation and I go to the last pixel there, copy the coordinate, paste it in notepad and add the value 1, which will be boolean 1 when we convert it. Call it outlet and then we can convert it. the text format to uh, PC raster map format. And you always use LDD as a mask to be consistent, but it doesn't matter if they're all derived from uh, the LDD. Now move it to the top. And I still need to make a real boolean out of it, so I create a spatial of boolean zero. That I'm going to uh, merge with the pixel that only has value 1 and no data. So this is a raster with only uh, zeros. And we can use the cover tool for that. So I give the outlet and all the no data pixels will be covered with boolean 0. Let's call this outlet boolean. Style it. There it is. And our blue pixel there is the outlet. But it's Boolean, so all the other pixels are zero. So let's go back to LDD dist and fill in the dialog. And we save the result to travel time. Now let's have a look. Style it with single and pseudo color. That looks really nice. But we need to make a map with isochrones. So I'm going to uh, bin this uh, travel time raster. And I'm going to use many classes to get very precise uh, points on our hydrograph. And the method then that I'm going to use, uh, use the raster attribute table. First, I need to uh, style this continuous raster uh, using classes. And the maximum amount of classes I can uh, generate is 255 with this method. So change the mode to equal interval because we also want these uh, isochrones at equal intervals. And I changed it to 255 classes. So here we see the travel time in uh, seconds. And you need the raster attribute table plugin. I already have it installed, but you can install it from the plugins manager. And then you can uh, click right on a raster layer and say uh, new attribute table. Choose GDAL. And, uh, now it's created, and here it shows the same colors and the same uh, intervals at, as we have chosen in the layer styling panel. So now there's a nice tool in the processing toolbox that we can uh, convert a lookup table from the uh, raster attribute table format. Then we can create a CSV from the raster attribute table. And always check uh, the output. In this case, we don't need the first line because it really starts at uh, zero. 
remove the first line, save it. And now we can use this uh, lookup table to uh, create an isochrome map. Use the lookup tool. Choose the travel time layer. Choose the lookup table. Scalar output. And I call it travel time classes. There it is. We also need to uh, calculate the areas of the classes, so therefore I am going to make another lookup table. And we do that by uh, opening the previous lookup table in LibreOffice. And we choose that it only has a space as a separator. So there we see the ranges in one column, and in column B we see the uh, boundary values. And uh, I just want a unique number per class. So now they all have a unique number. So I can create a map with those unique numbers and calculate the areas of those uh, classes. Let's call it zones. Confirm to use the CSV format and check the result. And that looks good. So we can use this now to uh, create a map with the zones. Use the lookup tool. Use the travel time layer. And this time we use the zones CSV file classify it into unique numbers. So we choose nominal as an output data type. Save it. I call it zones. And there's our uh, map with zones with uh, unique numbers. Here you can see that the legend does not have uh, all values yet, but if I use palleted unique values, then we can see that it goes from zero to 200. 54 in this case. Now I can use uh, the area area tool to calculate the area of areas. So in this case, area of zones. In map units, so in square meters. And that's the result. Let's also style this. And let's have a look at those uh, boundary values. And this lowest value is the interval value. I copy that because I need that in our next calculation in the raster calculator, where we use the area of the classes. And we divide it by the interval. And that will give us the discharge value. Let's uh, quickly style it. So now we have the discharge and the travel time. So we can uh, make our uh, unit hydrograph. So there's a nice plugin, which is called the Raster Data Plotting Plugin. You need to install a uh, SciPy uh, using the OSGeo4W installer if you want to use this. So go to your OSGeo4W uh, setup. And there search for SciPy. Find it under the lips. And then install it from there. It also update uh, QGIS, etc. And then you can install the plugin. The plugin comes with a panel. You can open it by uh, clicking the button of the plugin. Choose a scatter plot. On the x axis, we want the travel time. In our case, in the classes. 
and on the y-axis I want to discharge and we need to uh, tune it a bit so I remove the one to one line and there the red dots we see our curve and we can uh, zoom a little bit and change the ranges interactively also need to change it to scatter so you see here now the white dots and that's our uh, unit hydrograph doesn't look really uh, perfect maybe there are some artifacts in the area or the method is uh, maybe not completely correct so if you have any suggestions on how to improve this method uh, please comment uh, in the video this is a bit experimental uh, i was just following another approach which has also been copied in the description below the video so um, this was how far i could come with uh, with these tools if you have other ideas please let me know if you like these videos, please subscribe and uh, looking forward to see you again.